I recently entered Canada for the first time and on today's video we're going to talk about in what ways Canada is better than the United States. These are the things about Canada that as a United States citizen I was most intrigued about. Every country is different and today I'm going to tell you what I think about Canada and in what specific ways I felt that Canada is a better place to live than the United States. Zoning is one of the areas where I think Canada has a better plan than the United States. This is currently the area where I live right now. You can see there's lakes, there's green areas, there's farming, there's commercial, there's residential, and there's private communities. All that in the same area. Commute times are long, congestion is expected, and it's a very impractical way to plan a city. Sprawling suburbs that swallow up a lot of land and really don't create a community. The plus side of this is that you can get a single family home with a lot of land. Zoning in Canada is much more compact. As you can see here on the right side of our screen, the wilderness begins and on the left, all types of urban developments are conjunction together. I really felt like Canadian cities were more like cities because of the population density and their zoning. And while most Americans are gonna shy away from that type of situation, Canada has done a better job of keeping their cities compact, which preserves a lot of their land as a resource for future generations. Farmland is wrapped around the cities as well, which means that the rural wilderness of Canada is still a preserved large wilderness that will be a huge resource for the country in the future. While in the United States, we have created roadways, highways that seamlessly seem to go absolutely nowhere. Take this area east of Tampa, where absolutely nothing makes sense. Residential areas come right up against commercial areas. Highways going in all types of directions. During the daytime, this is an endless traffic nightmare. Take the city of New Orleans in the United States, which was founded by Spaniards and the French. Perhaps this happened in Canada by accident, simply because of their French roots. However, this type of city planning seems like a better long-term strategy for growth. So number one, city planning in Canada seems to make a lot more sense. And I think they're preserving a lot of land for the future and their cities are more compact, giving them a more cosmopolitan feel. Despite the population density, traffic seems to be acceptable for the size of the cities. And because you don't have to drive 15 miles to the nearest Starbucks, a lot of people choose to walk or bike to their destinations. Of course, in the United States, people are afraid of cities because they feel that they're more dangerous. Well, that's a very complex topic that we'd have to elaborate on endlessly to really understand it. Safety in Canada is much better than in the United States. There's a lot of factors why the United States is more dangerous than Canada, but generally in Canada you feel much safer. The top three most dangerous cities in Canada would be among the top 10 safest in the United States. Some people believe that Canada's loss on weapons, health care, immigration contribute to making the country a much safer place. While I'm not exactly sure of the specific causes, I can tell you that both analytically and in practice, you will feel very safe in Canada to a degree you've never felt in the United States. Even in day-to-day -day interactions, you'll notice that people are kinder, more respectable, and much less driven to conflict. For me, safety is a priority, and number two, is safety. Canada is a very diverse country and not only in the cities you'll find that there's people from all over the world spread throughout the entire country and while the United States has taken a harsh stance on immigration most people immigrating to the United States are doing it illegally and they're coming from poor countries or areas of conflict they have bad skill sets, they have no education, they have no legal status, and they rarely seem to want to acclimate to the country. The stance that Canada has taken on immigration is completely different. Instead of taking people from poor countries with a lot of problems, 
Canada has attracted wealthy immigrants with good skill sets. While the United States deports people who are unwanted, Canada seeks for people they want and brings them into their country. It's almost like they've hand-selected the best people throughout the entire world and brought them to their country and given them resources so they can be successful. And this has led to Canada not only being a safer country, it's also led for much better development, more talented people living in the country with better skills. Currently, the Premier of Quebec made an announcement saying that he wants people who speak French throughout the entire world to come to his state or province. Number three is Canada's stance on immigration. While the United States doesn't want immigrants, Canada says we want the best immigrants. You'll also notice that as you enter certain regions of Canada, there are two languages, English and the French. While the United States has tried to eliminate the French and Spanish influences in their country, Canada has made laws to ensure that these regionalistic cultures are able to preserve their identity and their ethnic rights. Both in New England and in Louisiana, the French language has existed in the United States. States like Florida, Texas, California, New Mexico, and Arizona have historically had Hispanic communities. And the United States has done everything possible to eradicate any Spanish influence in a sort of ethnic cleansing. Meanwhile, in Canada, they've preserved the French language, its ethnicity, its culture, and they've done everything to ensure that even people traveling to this region of Canada have to speak the French language since the street signs, every sign has to be primarily in French and then secondarily in English or another language. The equivalent of this would be, for example, in South Florida, for every street sign to be in Spanish and the people visiting South Florida to have to learn Spanish. Many years ago, the Welcome to Florida sign was in Spanish and the Welcome to Louisiana signs were in French. The United States has made an avid effort to cleanse these types of cultural relics of the region. While Canada has acknowledged, preserved, and ensured that the rights of these ethnic groups are protected within their own country. And if you don't want to learn French or don't want to be subjected to arrête stop signs, don't go to Quebec. You can miss out on one of the most beautiful cities in North America if you don't want to learn the French language. Personally, I found that people in Quebec were very accommodating. And while not everyone that I dealt with specifically knew English, they were very respectful about the fact that I didn't know French, despite what a lot of people told me. Number four is respecting ethnic boundaries. I found that while I didn't know French, the French people were very understanding that I spoke English. However, if you come to South Florida and you do not speak Spanish, you can expect to be treated rudely. And that just simply goes to show how the stance on ethnic boundaries in the United States has actually made a more hostile environment. And while a lot of people call the Quebec people that speak French backwards and trying to isolate themselves, my personal experience was that they're very embracing. One of the biggest challenges that the United States is facing right now is homelessness. While homelessness is present in Canada to a very small degree, it has nothing to do with the deplorable conditions that exist in the United States right now. In the year 2011, I visited my home country of Cuba and I saw homeless camps at landfills. And I can tell you that the things that are happening in the United States right now with homelessness are even more heart-wrenching and deplorable than what I saw in homeless camps in Cuba. The problems in homeless camps in the United States has reached a level that is alarming and quite disturbing. And while the media has portrayed California as the place with the worst homeless camps, my experience traveling through the United States, the vast majority of the worst heart-wrenching homelessness that I've seen has been outside of the cities in Florida and in the state of Pennsylvania, places like Philadelphia. Instead of finding a solution to homelessness and its root causes, it has just become another issue for people to politicize. Homelessness in the United States continues to be one of its most embarrassing features. While homelessness does exist in Canada, it's a much smaller and contained problem. Ironically, a lot of the homeless people in Canada happen to be from the United States. A lot of the largest homeless camps in Mexico are adjacent to the U.S. border. 
the humanitarian crisis in the United States is so bad that it spills over into neighboring countries. Canada just doesn't get people to the point they become so poor they end up homeless or resort to crime to have basic needs. Mental illness goes hand in hand with homelessness and Canada has been able to address this problem in better ways than the United States. So if you're standing on a sidewalk in Toronto, you don't have to worry about a crackhead stabbing you in the head with a needle. Access to social services is number four. This has prevented Canada from becoming an open homeless camp and from having people with mental problems roaming the streets. It's really embarrassing that I've seen people in the United States with a walker who can barely walk making their way through streets begging. In Canada, these people are going to have all their basic needs covered and maybe an electric scooter so they can travel safely from one destination to the next. Talking about transportation, I found that Canada has better infrastructure. Take a look at this road in front of a school in a town of Alabama. Ironically, Alabama has some of the best infrastructure and road maintenance in the United States for their white communities. Meanwhile, the African American areas can't even get a road paved in front of a school. The northern part of Alabama, which is predominantly white, is one of the fastest growing regions in the country, as well as Baldwin County in the south. However, the central part of Alabama that's mostly African American, the roads are unpaved, the schools don't have central air conditioning or heating. When it comes to infrastructure in the United States, it seems like there's areas that are purposely being held back. In Canada, infrastructure is for everybody, not just for a select few. And while all one has to do is travel through Canada and you'll realize that their infrastructure is much better kept, number five is infrastructure. While it's very similar to the United States, you won't find areas that are being neglected. And let's say you decide that you don't want to respect the laws of traffic in the country of Canada. We notice signs that you could receive a fine for as much as $10,000 for speeding. A town in the United States or a medium-sized city would spend $10,000 a month trying to patrol a highway outside of that area. Perhaps the cost wouldn't even be monetary. Perhaps a police officer could lose his life on a highway pulling over people that are speeding. While New York City has implemented technology to keep their city streets safe when it comes to traffic, the vast majority of the United States doesn't have these measures. And regardless of that, people have ghost license plates or vehicles that are not registered, so it doesn't even matter. Between New Jersey and New York, we saw people whose license plates would flip when they go through the cameras and they would wear a ski mask to prevent the pictures being taken. In other words, people are really making a mockery out of the traffic laws and the toll roads in the United States. Canada goes as far as posting the amount of money each infraction carries on the side of the road so you know exactly how much your stupidity is going to cost you. Number six is the fines that you receive for breaking the law. They really discourage people from breaking the law and makes for a much more orderly society. Needless to say, you're not going to find too many people breaking those laws when you can pay up to $10,000 for doing so. If your history books in the United States haven't erased it yet, the end of the Underground Railroad was actually Canada, and the African American communities in the United States are suffering, while in Canada, their Afro-Canadian communities are living just like everybody else. A much smaller percentage of the population, but nonetheless, they're not looked at as differently, and while the United States enslaved and these people had to flee, the end of the Underground Railroad was really Canada, and there they were really safe, not just quote-unquote safer than being enslaved. How they've treated their African Canadians is number seven. The stigmas of crime and other negative things that are associated with African Americans really doesn't exist in Canada with their African communities. Because of proximity to the United States, many of the issues that are relevant in the United States become relevant in Canada, but the overall condition and how it affects people's lives are not the same. So is everything better in Canada than in the United States? Of course not. These are two different countries, and there's a lot of ways that the United States is a superior place to live than Canada. I'm not sure at which point the person trying to live the American dream became the villain, 
But in Canada, if you want to immigrate, there's a lot of rules, requirements, and standards that you're going to have to comply with. Regardless of what the requirements are, if you're an immigrant or a minority, Canada seems like a much more safe and attractive option, especially if you are of Asian, Middle Eastern, or African descent. Many cities in Canada even have a European vibe. Something about having land and space, a lot of people like land and space, and that's not really easy to obtain in Canada. Confined city living is not something everybody enjoys. Seems like people in the United States really like to have their space, and that's totally understandable. There's definitely more remote parts of Canada, but I noticed that real estate prices in Canada, especially in the rural remote areas, are a lot higher than in the United States. Combine that with brutal winters, and living in Canada can be difficult, especially if you're not within the city cores. Even in late spring, overnight temperatures can dip into the lower 40s. You could literally find yourself wearing a sweater in the summertime here. The brutal winters are definitely the biggest menace of living in Canada, forcing a vast majority of the population to be in the southern region of the country adjacent to the United States, the central and northern parts of Canada being almost uninhabitable. Affordability is almost non-existent when you're looking at obtaining a place in Canada. The cost of real estate here is higher than the United States. Overall cost of services, products, and food. You're going to struggle to find anything in Canada that's more economical than in the United States. With immigration laws being so strict, it almost felt like the normal Canadian was the working class. It was very interesting in Canada to see the white English speaking person being the worker and everybody else kind of being more affluent. I'm not sure if that causes any resentment within the Canadians, but it sure encourages everybody to be better. And overall, the people in Canada are expected to be better. While in the United States, you can almost lay back and be a failure and it's not a problem. Number eight is healthy people. One of the things that absolutely struck me about Canada is how they walk, jog, bike, get out there and do outdoor activities. And I felt embarrassed when I went to Canada to look at how overweight we are as Americans and how we don't get enough physical exercise. Could it be that their food's healthier? Could it be that their access to social services and lifestyle is better? Regardless, I really felt embarrassed when I looked at myself in Canada, and I have never felt that way in the United States. You just don't see as many people in Canada that are stagnant as we have become in the United States. And without a doubt, the general practices of people in Canada and looking out for their own health care and getting out there and being healthy and being active is very noticeable, something that we're really lacking in the United States. We tend to go for the comforts of air conditioners, couches, and cars, and we forget that this sedentary lifestyle is very harmful. But it also goes to show that people in Canada care about themselves who they are as a person, not just the cars, not just the houses. People in Canada seem to really care about their body, their health, what they put into their body, and there's a lot more willpower to be a better person in Canada. While in the United States, we take all these comforts and easy access to opportunities and just take everything for granted. Perhaps we just get so consumed with materialism that we don't dedicate any time to boating, fishing, outdoor activities, and things that make us better as a person. I'm not sure if it's a combination of health care and the way people just treat each other better that makes people in Canada just feel better about themselves, not as depressed, not as concerned with political issues. People are just kind of living their lives in a better fashion in Canada. But after visiting Canada, I'm going to strive to be a lot healthier with my eating and also with my day-to-day -day activities, being more active and caring more about who I am as a person and not so much how much money I have in the bank. Of course, Canada is a massive country and in a week or two, it's not enough time to know everything there is to know about this country. But overall, as an American seeing Canada for the first time, these were the eight things that struck me the most. The way they treat their immigrants, their concerns over safety, and ensuring that law and order prevails. Hitting people where it really hurts 
in the pocket. I also felt like in Canada, your personal achievements are expected. If you don't have the financial basics in order, nobody's going to come and rescue you. You got to go out there and fish. You got to go out there and get it. I've entered the United States a few times and I've never really had any problems entering the country. However, to enter Canada, we were searched extensively. We had to show them our bank accounts, how much money we had for our trip. Many of the things we consider constitutional rights in the United States are starting to feel antiquated to me after visiting Canada. And while these are the principles that the United States was founded on, the lack of a constitution as we have in the United States means that in Canada, things are done by practicality, not by norm. The ability of the government to encroach on people's lives in Canada is much more concerning. However, they don't overstretch and do it to the harm or to the neglect of society. They do it to make sure that the society functions better. That certainly wouldn't work in a place like the United States that's so polarizing and where people are so full of hate, willing to act out of contempt, not out of general purpose. And many of the views of people in the United States are starting to encroach upon the media of Canada and hopefully the people there realize that while on the radio you're hearing something that sounds similar to what's happening in the United States, the vast majority of Canadians are not buying into that. So while on the radio in Canada you're hearing the same issues of racism towards blacks, indigenous people, and of course the Quebecis, Corbeau, Quebec, Quebecian, Caboozy, what are you? boozies the radio sounds the same if you just turn on the radio in canada it sounds like the same thing you're hearing in the united states but the reality on the ground doesn't line up and then there's the fact that the canadian dollar has queen elizabeth on it and canada is in some way or another entangled with europe in more ways than we could imagine we tend to look at canada as its own independent country in north america and not realized all the ties that it has to england England and France have their hands tied in Canada, where the United States is more independent from the European empires. Yet culturally, Canadians are tied into the United States, and the outlook of the youth is definitely influenced more by what happens in the United States than what happens in Europe. Those are eight ways in which Canada is better than the United States. Quite frankly, I would have to get my money up before I could qualify to live in this country. And with their brutal winters, I don't know if I want to submit myself to that type of winter depression. Then you cross the border back into the United States, cities like Buffalo, Detroit, and you realize which country has a better thing going on. It's almost like you step back into time when you enter the United States and you see all the rundown buildings, roads that aren't repaired. Anybody who's crossed the border of the United States and Canada knows what I'm talking about. As soon as you enter these cities like Detroit, after seeing a place like Toronto, you realize that the United States isn't exactly, in every way possible, better than Canada. In fact, we have problems here that are mounting in bigger ways than the problems they have in Canada. It's like everything's bigger and better in the United States, including our problems. But to think that the roads in bad condition, the buildings that are burnt out and blown apart and abandoned are on the U.S. side of that border is definitely something to think about. The fact that the homelessness, the boarded up buildings, and all these problems are predominantly on the U.S. side of that bridge, along with a lawlessness that has made the United States one of the most dangerous countries in the world on par with places like Mexico and Brazil. If you like space and land, in good weather, perhaps the United States could be a better country for you. But if safety is your prime concern, as well as equality if you're a minority, then clearly Canada is a better option. Over 1 million United States citizens currently live in Canada. Despite having a larger population than Canada, there are 800,000 Canadians living in the United States, which means that Americans are more likely to immigrate to Canada than Canadians to the United States. Because more Americans immigrate to Canada than Canadians to the United States, does that mean that Canada's better? Not exactly. A lot of Canadians wish that they could live in the United States 
simply because of the weather. With recent changes, including the collapse of Canadian currency, a lot of Canadians aren't even snowboarding to Florida like they used to in the past. So does that mean that even with all its mounting problems, the United States is still better than Canada? Let me hear your thoughts and opinions.